promise of the end. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to a brand new episode of Roundup. As promised, we have a lot of new content in store for you this season, so don't forget to join us every Sunday and tune in on MTA. And, as always, let's start off with the headlines. Violent protests across Iran continue where people are cutting their hair and burning their hijab after the death of Mahsa Amini. Amini, 22, died within police custody after leading an anti-hijab protest. The Iranian president has stated that the death of Amini has saddened all. However, chaos and violent protest won't be acceptable. Last Wednesday, the coast of Florida was hit by powerful winds and torrential rain as Hurricane Ian, a Category 4 hurricane, crashed ashore. Authorities had warned residents of Florida to beware of the storm and urged them to evacuate to safety as the storm grew closer. Saudi Arabia's mission to the International Space Station next year will include the world's first female Arab astronaut. Aboard a SpaceX capsule, she will be accompanied by another Saudi and two Americans as part of a private mission slated for 2023, arranged by the U.S. company Axiom. Since Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered a wartime mobilization in Moscow, many Russians have fled the country to find a better life in Kazakhstan. Tens of thousands crossed the world's second longest land border, as Russians only required identity papers to enter Kazakhstan. Kazakh President Kasim Jomart Tokayev hopes to accommodate and support the migrants as changes are being made to immigration rules. Lebanon's three-year financial meltdown has pushed 80% of the population into poverty and gutted public services, including water and electricity. Public schools have been delayed so far this school year, with teachers waging an open-ended strike over low salaries, and administrations continue to worry about securing fuel to keep lights and heating on this winter. An experimental Alzheimer's drug made by eCycle LTD and Biogen has shown signs of slowing cognitive and functional decline in a large trial of patients in the early stages of the disease. The drug, Lecanelab, slowed progress of the disease by 27% compared with a placebo. Thirteen giant panda cubs born in 2022 made their public debut at a breeding base in China's Sichuan province on October 1st. The baby pandas greeted in the public in front of the sun delivery room of the Chengdu research base of giant panda breeding. According to zookeepers, 15 giant panda cubs, including four pairs of twins, were born in the breeding base this year. Jazakallah for that. For the first report of today's episode, we'll be looking at something that has had us on the edge all summer. Most people have had to plan their outings around it. Have you got any guesses? Am I right in saying it's something that everyone's been talking about? Maybe heat waves? Absolutely. Let's go check it out right now. With summer over in the Northern Hemisphere, millions are breathing a sigh of relief after sweltering temperatures made the summer months unbearable. Meanwhile, the Southern Hemisphere is bracing for what is expected to be another long summer of record-breaking temperatures. We don't need a bunch of numbers to tell us just how hot it has been lately, almost everywhere in the world. I definitely felt it here in the UK in the past few weeks, and I'm sure you did too. But just to give you an idea of how hot it really has been, on July 19th, the UK recorded its hottest ever temperature at 104 Fahrenheit or 40 Celsius. And in the US, 150 million people were under heat warnings with above average temperatures. Heat waves across Japan, China, Australia and the Indian subcontinent in the past year saw temperatures as high as 50 Celsius. At the very least, the extreme weather causes us all to be a lot less productive than normal. But more seriously, it is causing everything from drought to wildfires and even deaths. And the problem is that rising global temperatures will continue to make heat waves more common, severe and lengthy. Heat is the biggest sign of climate change, with deadly heat getting even worse over the next 30 years. Governments are struggling to act on initiatives to cool our planet down, which drastically needs to be done. Scientists have been warning that the rise of global average temperature 
caused by increasing greenhouse gas levels will also increase the risk of hot weather. Simple ways we can reduce our greenhouse gas emissions is by line drying clothes, washing them with cold water, adjusting our home thermostats up three degrees in the summer and down three degrees in the winter. Other ideas include planting native gardens, using renewable energy such as solar panels and switching to electric vehicles. While one of us making small changes in our lifestyles may not save the planet, many of us doing so may just help cool down the planet enough so we don't suffer from such extreme heat waves in the future. Jazakallah for that interesting report, Asul. This summer sure was difficult to deal with. That's right, but now it's time for the most insightful and important part of the episode. Let's now head over to Islamabad to hear the Friday Salmon Summary. Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. During this week's Friday sermon, Hazur spoke in great detail about the prayer duel and the great victory mentioned by the Promised Messiah. Did you know the prayer duel between the Promised Messiah and Alexander Dawi was published in many newspapers across the world? During this week's sermon, Hazur Aidullah Ta'ala bin Asr Aziz said that Allah the Almighty has enabled the community in the USA to build a mosque in a city which holds great importance to the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Hazur said, For a mosque to be built in a city where an opponent lived who spoke very badly against Islam and the promised Messiah Islam, is a reason for us all to be very grateful to Allah the Almighty. Beloved Hazur also reminded us that the Holy Prophet once stated that those who are not grateful to others are not grateful to God. This is why, dear brothers and sisters, we should always try to remember to thank everyone and to be grateful to them as that is the only way we can also show that we are grateful to Allah the Almighty. Hazur also explained that our mission and task does not finish here. Although the message of the promised Messiah has reached over 200 countries in the world, it is our responsibility that with prayer we try to see the fulfilment of the promise that the community would reach every corner of the world. Beloved Hazur, Aidullah Ta'ala bin Nasir al-Aziz further mentioned the true purpose of building mosques and said that mosques are built so that people may worship five times a day, remember God and keep themselves away from worldliness. But if this is not the result after building this mosque, then we will not benefit from the blessings of the mosque. Dear viewers, from this we understand that we should always try to go to the mosque for prayers and after a mosque is built beautifully, it should also be filled with worshippers so that we can take part in the true blessings of the mosque. Beloved Azur, during the sermon, said that the mosque which has been built has been named Fateh Azim Mosque because it shows a great victory which was given to the promised Messiah About 115 years ago, a man named Alexander Dawi challenged the promised Messiah and stood up against Islam. To this, the promised Messiah said, Whoever is true in their claim will see the demise of the other, and this way Dawi's health worsened greatly. He lost a great amount of wealth he collected, and his city also fell apart. He then died in the year 1907 before the promised Messiah. In this week's sermon, Hazur Aidullah Ta'ala bin Asr al Aziz also said that we must show the same example which was shown by the Muslims at the time of the Holy Prophet and support the promised Messiah to do justice to the promise we have made to him. We must raise our standards of worship in order to fulfill the very purpose of life for which we have been created. Beloved Azur said people will only look towards this mosque when we do justice to our worship of God, and only then will we be able to fulfill the mission of the promised Messiah Dear brothers and sisters, this is why we should try our best to improve ourselves daily and make our prayers and worship better every single day. This was just a very brief summary of last week's Friday sermon, which was filled with many interesting stories and incidents. We hope you are able to hear the full sermon, which can be found on mta.tv. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah for that Friday sermon summary, Wudud. As you may have noticed, Hadur, Aidullah Ta'ala, Banasil Aziz, has already started his tour around America. Let's head over with Gashif to find out more about the history of Zion. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Kasha Latif. I am an Ahmadi Muslim born and raised in Zion, Illinois. 
Zion is actually a very historic town in the history of Ahmadiyyat. A great prophecy by the Promised Messiah was fulfilled here. Follow me to learn all about it. This town was founded by John Alexander Dowie. He was an opponent of Islam and claimed that he would destroy all Muslims. He became very popular and set up his own church. Thousands of people used to attend his sermons. He founded his own city, which is the city of Zion, the place I grew up in. This is the house that Dowie built for himself, a 25-room mansion where he lived like a king. Now, let's go speak to Marabi Tariq Nassim to learn about the prophecy of the Promised Messiah, alayhi salam, about Dawi. Alexander Dawi was a very big deal in his time. To give an example, he actually had 100,000 subscribers to his newspaper. And if you think about it now, 100,000 subscribers to any social media is a big deal now. At that time, what would it have been? He was considered one of the most influential people of his time. And he grew. And at that time, he made it his mission to destroy Islam and defame the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi salam. This, when the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, saw this, he had to defend his prophet, his master. And Dawi made very large claims even to be a prophet. And in that, he said that he would annihilate anyone and any Muslim who stood. So the promised Messiah some said, let's make it very simple. Don't annihilate the world, all of the Muslims there. Annihilate just me. And in that process, whoever dies without any human interference would be the one who's false. Very simple. But to see a man like him who had the most of the most, the greatest cutting edge technology, business, everything, sitting in America, making his own hub, his own town, his own village, and the promised Messiah Islam sitting in a village in India. Basically the claim was that the person has to die without any human interference. So it can't be like someone get, dies by way of gunshot and someone plans that. It was by disease, by lightning, or by snake bite. And the one thing that's really interesting in America, the life expectancy was much higher. India was half of what was considered in America. And snake bites there were very common, way bigger statistically. So the Promised Messiah Islam called out in a way that would be a disadvantage for himself. And the interesting part is the prophecy came true, and Dawi actually had a very bad stroke at one of his most public events. And after that, his life kind of fell into a decline. His family left him, his following left him. He died a very miserable and sad death. And he used to sit on the highest of highest thrones and had money, fame, anything you can imagine. And now if you even pass by his grave, people here in Zion today don't even know who he is. And he is the founder of the city itself. We have been blessed that Azor himself has inaugurated this historic mosque. आज आप यहाँ जायन की मस्जिद के इस्तेमाल के लिए जमा हैं। अल्लाह ताला ने जमात हमदिया अमेरिका को तोफिक दी कि उस मस्जिद की तामिर करे और उस शहर में करे जो जमात की तारीख में एक खास अहमियत रखता है। दो दिन पहले एक जर्नलिस्ट ने मुझे सवाल किया कि मस्जिद यहाँ के लिए इतनी अहम क्यों है? तो मसाजिद तो हमारे लिए हरी अहम होती है। मैंने उसे यही कहा था। तमाम मसाजिद ही हमारे लिए ले हैं मैं। उसका ख्याल था कि सिर्फ इस मस्जिद के लिए खास तौर पर मैं यहाँ आया हूँ। मैंने कहा पहले भी जाता रहता था मसाजिद के इस्ताम भी है एक और वो ये है कि इस शहर में तमीर हुई है ये मस्जिद जो एक मुखालफ इस्लाम का बात किया हुआ शहर है और जिन लोगों को तारीख से दिलचस्पी है वो इस तारीख के जानने की कोशिश करेंगे इस शहर की तारीखी अहमियत और एक नाम नहाद दावेदार और उसका हज़रत मसीह मौलवी अल्लाह तआला इस्लाम के खिलाफ गलत जुबान इस्तेमाल करना और फिर उसका खात्मा होना और इस शहर में जमात का कायम होना अल्लाह ताला का शुक्र अदा करने वाला हर रहमती को बनाता है 
और बनाना चाहिए In our next report, Zachary and Adam will be teaming up to take us on an authentic Canadian experience. You may be wondering what that is. Well, let's head over to the Wanaskerin Canadian Heritage Park to find out more. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Whether it's skiing, watching an ice hockey match, or spending time at scenic lakes, Canada has something to offer for everyone. But if you are after a truly authentic Canadian experience, there are several immersive indigenous tourism experiences that will bring you closer to the culture and history of the First Peoples. We are here at Wanas. Wanas Kaywen Heritage Park today, and we will be taking you on a tour with us. For over 6,000 years, Wanas Kaywen Heritage Park was a meeting place for Northern Plains Indians. Long before the pyramids of Egypt or the Great Walls of China, Saskatchewan's first peoples gathered here to hunt, buffalo, worship, and celebrate. Now, this park is a place to learn about that culture and that history. In fact, some people still come here to pray and do offerings. Isn't that what one's Kaywin means? That's right. The name one is Kaywin comes from the Cree language meaning being at peace with oneself. Some of the values the people of one is Kaywin live by are honoring the elders, bridging cultural understanding, mutual respect and trust, celebrating diversity and spirituality. In 2019, a herd of bison was introduced to Wanaskewin after decades of efforts to bring them back from near extinction. The purpose was to bring the community together since the indigenous people who gathered here 6,000 years ago did so because of the bison. Little children nowadays may have a little teepee in their playroom, but did you know that the teepee was originally used by the Great Plains tribes? Traditionally made of animal skin and wooden poles, the teepee is a conical tent that provides warmth in the winter and cool air in the summer. They are portable to coincide with the nomadic lifestyle of the Great Plains people. Well, we hope you enjoy touring the Wanuskewin Heritage, Heritage Park with us today. This is one of many immersive indigenous tourism experiences around Canada that will bring you closer to the culture and history of the First Peoples. So the next time you are in Canada and looking for something to do, we would recommend choosing an experience by the indigenous peoples. Until next time, assalamu alaikum. Each week, we are active with you on social media and urge you to send in your views about a chosen topic. Absolutely. And this week, we spoke to you to find out how you handled this year's heat waves and if you had any tips for the rest of us. And here's what you had to say. Um, we put sun cream on before we go out or we just stay in whilst the heat waves are on the most like at three o'clock. Um, we try not to go out for too long between 11 to 3. For our Around the World Today, we'll be flying over to Indonesia for a unique report on Eid. So, without any further ado, let's dive right in. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hassan. And my name is Hussein. 
We are in Buni Jaya, Indonesia, a village just outside of the city of Bandung on, ja- on Java Island. We came here to celebrate Eid al-Adha with our great-grandmother. Starting at Maghrib time, the night before Eid, we can hear takbirat being called from the masjid speakers well into the night and before Fajr. We continue to hear them on our way to the masjid for Eid prayers that were around 7 a.m. Eid al Oha is celebrated for three days and commemorates the sacrifice of Hazrat Ibrahim and Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam. In obedience to Allah Ta'ala, one of the rituals is slaughtering an animal. A, a goat, a lamb, a cow, or a camel could all be sacrificed. Alhamdulillah, this year our family is slaughtering a cow, and we came to the farm on the second day. One cow can be for seven households, meaning that they need to divide the meat into seven portions. When we receive our portion, that needs to be divided into three more portions. One for our family, one for for the poor, and one for our friends and neighbors. May Allah accept our Eid prayers and sacrifices. Amen. Jazakallah for that interesting insight into Eid. Unfortunately, that's all we have in store for this episode. That's right. But... Don't forget to send us your feedback on our socials or on our email at roundup at mta.tv. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum.